Amen. 441 in your hymnal. 441. I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me. Sunlight in my soul. Let's stand together as we sing. 441. <clears throat> I wandered in the shades of night till Jesus came to me. Within the sunlight of his love bid all my darkness flee. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin. I have had the sunlight of his love within. On that third. While walking in the light of God, I sweet communion find. I press with holy vigor on and leave this world behind. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin. I have had the sunlight of his love within. Oh, my life. I shall see him as he is the light that came to me. Behold the brightness of his face throughout eternity. Sunlight, sunlight in my soul today. Sunlight, sunlight all along the way. Since the Savior found me, took away my sin. I have had the sunlight of his love with him. Good singing. Good to see you back in church tonight. Had a wonderful morning this morning, did we not? Yeah. And uh, praise the Lord for a good service today and God meeting with us. And uh, thank for those who made their professions of faith in Christ and those who were baptized this morning. And we thank the Lord for that. And we're back for more tonight. Amen. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us this evening. Thanks for being in church tonight. Let's bow together in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we bow before you at the beginning of the service tonight. Thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, as the choir sang tonight, I'm sure glad we're on the victory side. And Lord, we can give you the thanks for you give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we're thankful to be part of the winning side. We love you this evening, Lord, and we're bowing before you at the beginning of the service for you to speak to our hearts tonight. Uh, use the music of the service, the songs we sing, the choir special. Lord, I pray that everything done tonight would be for your pleasure, that it would be for your glory. And Lord, you would speak to our hearts. Use, use these songs and use the preaching of the Word of God, the fellowship of believers. Use it in each one of our lives. Mold us and make us into vessels of honor for thee. We love you. We ask you to meet with us. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. 249 together in your hymnal, 249, oh what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget, heaven came down and glory filled my soul, 249 on that first together, oh what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget, after I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met, oh what a tender compassionate friend he met the need of my heart sad as this spelling with joy and telling he made all the darkness depart heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross the Savior made me whole my sins are washed Born of the Spirit with life from above Into God's family divine I'm justified holy through Calvary's love Oh, what a standing is mine And the transaction so quickly was made When I a sinner I came Took to the offer of grace He did proper He saved me all praise his dear name Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins are washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now I've a hope that will surely endure 
some announcements now by the way uh, brother Gibney this morning at the prison uh, preached out the prison orient and had 11 men give their life to Christ this morning amen isn't that good 11 saved there this morning that's a good report praise the Lord for that good service and um, now we get ready this week for our missions conference week all right uh, there is uh, much to get done first of all let's see let me th those of you who put a card in the offering plate and we had a meeting on a Monday evening uh, they're going to help during the conference I need to meet with you just briefly after the service okay should just be have a paper to give to you and uh, make sure we're on the same page for the conference and so if you'll see me after the service tonight we'll just meet in this section right over here okay and uh, we'll get that done in a, in a quick manner and I appreciate that and then as far as the uh, schedule this week, we have uh, much to get done uh, before Wednesday night uh, with our remodel downstairs. Uh, carpet is coming Tuesday, and uh, it's going to get carpeted, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, before we come Wednesday night. Uh, there's still painting to get done. There's some tile to get up. There's carpeting to get ripped up. Uh, down there before we put the new down. Uh, anybody who has any time tomorrow uh, during the day, tomorrow night anytime we need you okay uh doesn't matter who you are male female if you're if you have a pulse you come and uh we'll use you okay we need uh we need to uh, need to get the work done and get this ready where that that room uh multi-purpose room across from the nursery that's going to be finished and that's where the missionary displays are going to go uh and so a lot of a lot of things to get accomplished uh in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours or so so uh we need your help and uh so please uh show up and we'll put you to work okay and uh, it will be a great great help um <clears throat> appreciate you taking time for that and uh, we need you okay uh consequently by the way no uh soul winning visitation tuesday evening this week just saturday and saturday we'll be going out with the missionaries okay and uh just make a note uh saturday morning will be 9 30 here in the auditorium okay usually it's 10 o'clock half hour earlier th for this week we're doing something special on saturday so 9 30 uh and we'll do our best to uh, get you paired up and get you the chance to visit a little bit with the missionary so you get to know them a little bit and uh, it'll be a great blessing um <clears throat> that'll be coming up on saturday then remember uh, seven o'clock wednesday night for the wednesday night service just as usual the children's programs will be running uh, as usual on wednesday night uh, thursday night the kickoff for the missions conference at 6 45 friday night what time 6 45 okay that's four of us uh what time on friday night 6 45 what time on thursday night 6 45 ah but what time on saturday night five o'clock on saturday night that's the international dinner need to sign up for that downstairs and uh several have done that already let's get that uh com completed uh, so we know how many are coming and how many to set up for and to expect and uh, that's a great time then we come in here afterwards and have a service in here the knickerbockers will be presenting going to nepal on, and they're, they'll be presenting on saturday night and uh, brother and will have a, a brief message for us we'll give out our faith promise cards on saturday night and that's also the night that uh, they receive all the gifts that you've purchased for them. And uh, that's always a wonderful, wonderful time. So it's a, it's, a great, it's a great week. I'm excited for it. Looking forward to every single night. And I hope you will plan to be a part of that uh, on the missions conference. Now, as far as the dinner on Friday night, if you are bringing a hot dish, I don't mean your wife, fellas, okay? If you're bringing a, a hot dish, okay, there's... 
take a half pan in the lobby okay that'll that way you can bring that your food in that on saturday evening and we put it underneath the it keeps it warm that way okay <clears throat> and so uh, there's a half pan in the lobby uh you want to take that home to be able to bring your dish in in that okay hopefully that makes sense to you and uh you take care of that all right that's all i have and uh, now we'll take a minute, welcome any visitors we have with us in the service. We're always delighted when people visit with us. And if you're here tonight for the very first time, or you brought a guest with you maybe, uh, we'd love to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from. So uh, if you're visiting with us tonight, or if you brought a guest, go ahead and honor us by standing. There we go. <coughs> Got some back here. All right. Go ahead, Emma, introduce your guest for us. Wonderful, wonderful. Good to have you both tonight. Thank you for coming. That's great. <clears throat> Glad you brought your best friend and husband. That's great. Okay, right over here. Yes, sir. Amen. That's great, Donald. You're right about that. It's good to have you tonight. Good to see the Adam Lapich and wife back there. Good to see you guys tonight. Good to have you drop in. And Steve and Cassie Nipps are back there. Good to see you all. Haven't seen you for a while. It's good to have you tonight. Thanks for coming. That's great. And uh, glad you're here this evening. If, you're, <clears throat> if you've been handed a card by the usher, if you'll take just a moment and fill that card out for us, we would appreciate it. In a little bit, we'll have the offering. And you just drop that card in the offering, if you would. Uh, we're glad you're here this evening. Let's give them a warm welcome, shall we? Sixty-four in your hymnal 264 it is the grandest theme through the ages rung he is able he is able to deliver thee 264 on that first together tis the grandest theme for the ages rung 
Tis the grandest thing for a mortal dumb. Tis the grandest thing that the world e'er sung. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Tis the grandest thing in the earth for man. Tis the grandest thing for a mortal string. Tis the grandest thing now the world again. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. And oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Tis the grandest thing that the tidings roll to the guilty heart, to the sinful soul. Look to God in faith, he will make thee whole. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Amen. That's good. Five, two, three, five hundred twenty-three. I sought a flag to follow, a cause for which to stand. Let's stand together as we sing. A flag to follow, five, two, three, together. <clears throat> I sought a flag to follow, a cause for which to stand. I sought a valiant leader who could my love command. I sought a stirring talent, some noble work to try. To give my life fulfillment, my dreams to satisfy. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. And great one, another make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
I sought a ringing answer for all my doubts inside. A torch of truth uplifted my searching steps to guide. I sought a word of wisdom, a true authority. I sought to know life's purpose, to solve this mystery. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. On the last together, I sought for satisfaction, for yearning deep within. I sought for full deliverance from gains of and sin. I sought for peace and pardon, for freedom from my fears. I sought a hope to cling to beyond these passing years. I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. Great singing. You can be seated. Ushers will come and we'll receive our offering now tonight. Let's be prepared to give as God has blessed us and prospered us. Uh, be faithful in your missionary giving and be praying about what the Lord will have you do uh, in the coming year as far as faith, faith promise missions. And be praying, each, praying for our missionaries, praying for the conference, praying for God to have your heart open to whatever he would want to say to you this week. All right, and uh, well, I was thinking, you know, we'll, we'll have... Uh, to uh, the, the missionary will each get each night the missionary will get about 40 minutes so he can show his slide and preach to us and brother Hamilton will preach and if you're here on Thursday night Friday night Saturday night Sunday morning and Sunday night I think I added up the other day I think you'll get 10 messages in in about four days and uh, that's almost a month worth of church in four days and uh, you know what that'll do that'll help you that'll help you uh, it'll, it'll, you'll, you'll get a growth spurt uh, in spiritually uh, if you'll determine to be here. And so we're excited about that. And let's ask God to do something special in our midst as he comes. All right. Let's ask God's blessing on the offering tonight. And uh, Brother Josiah, lead us in our prayer, please. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, so much for the day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings that uh, you've given us today, Lord. I thank you for the uh, souls that were saved over at the prison today, Lord, and thank you for opening up that uh, opportunity, Lord, to get in there and uh, witness to those men, Lord, and I just pray you'd help uh, uh, the workers that are going over there, Lord, and uh, fill them with your spirit. pray you'd bless this offering, God, that you'd just help us to give willingly. Um, Lord, I, I pray you'd just provide for the needs of the church, Lord, that uh, we'd be able to uh, do more for you and that... Um, uh, you just help us, Lord, and we thank you so much for what you've already done and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. amen.
Sally appreciate that and by the way the fall arrangement from the pulpit is courtesy of Sally as well and uh, beautiful job on that amen take your Bible this evening if you would Matthew chapter 14 please for our scripture reading Matthew in chapter 14 <clears throat> We are going to read verses 22 through 32 this evening, verses 22 through 32 of Matthew chapter 14, and we read these verses responsively. We begin together on 22, then I read 23, and we alternate till we end together on verse 32 of Matthew chapter 14. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. Check the sound on this, Dave. This doesn't seem quite right. Check everything. Make sure it's right. All right, let's begin together on verse 22 of Matthew 14. Ready? And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. And let's pray. Father, add your blessing now to the reading of this portion of Scripture tonight. And Lord, we again thank you for the good music this evening, and Lord, for the good spirit that's in this place. Lord, we would ask you now that you would bless the special this evening, and that you, again you would use it to further prepare our hearts, to make us in tune with you, God, that we all would have ears to hear what the Spirit would say to his church this evening. Lord, prepare our hearts now, and we want to hear from thee, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I just want to say one word before Cindy and I sing this song. Uh, it's different. Our modern day ear is used to rhyming songs. And when you hear this one, it, if you aren't careful, not hearing the rhyming words can throw you off and miss this message. And I'll tell you, everything that we stand on comes, it's wrapped in this song. And, and I, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. And I, I just pray that it blesses you as much as it has me already in Cindy. Amen. There are people today say God's word is far away. On some theologian shelf, and the man in the pew must trust the educated few to tell him what God really says. They say we must know Dr. Greek, a Hebrew rabbi we must meet, if ever we would know God. The serpent lifts up his head, saying, Yea, hath God said, and the simple-minded are swayed. They say it's not the real thing, they say it's not original, it's just the very best that we have. 
we're told that this is just fine, that all the words are not there. Don't worry, his thoughts are preserved. But when the Savior disagrees, each word the Spirit oversees, they're his words, not yours or mine. He said that man shall not live without the words he would give. So I need God's every word book. Oh, yes, I need an every word Bible. I must read it each day. I need an every word Bible. No matter what the doctors and scholars might say, it's a lamp to my feet, it's a light to my path. I must hide it down deep in my heart. Oh, I need an every word Bible, without it I would stray. By simple faith I understand, God holds this whole world in his hand. By his word he made everything. He spoke the world in six days, made a man from the clay. It's all in that every word book. He put the manna on the ground, made the lions to lay down, kept the man alive in a well. If he could walk on the water, be the fourth man in a fire, then he can give me his every word book. Oh, if that I have an every word Bible, I just read it today. I have an every word Bible, no matter what the doctors and scholars might say. It's a life to my feet and a light to my path. It's hidden down deep in my heart. Oh, I have an every word Bible right here in my King James Bible. Yes, I have God's every word Bible right here in my King James Bible. And you'll never take it away. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Probably never thought you'd see the day that someone would have to to sing about an every word Bible and it would be an unusual thing. It ought to be a normal thing. Shouldn't have to wonder where God's word is, amen? I won't preach on that tonight, but I sure want to. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Father, we thank you so much for this evening and Lord, we thank you for an every word Bible that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And Lord, we pray that you'll bless the preaching of your word tonight. Give me the help I need as I bring the message this evening, Lord. Please give the folks the help they need as they listen. Holy Spirit, do thy work as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A spy was captured and sentenced to death by a general in the Persian army. Before carrying out the sentence, the general gave the spy a strange choice. He told him he could have his choice of a firing squad or a big black door. After some deliberation, the spy chose the firing squad. And within a few moments, he was dead. The general turned to his aide and said, They always prefer the known to the unknown. 
The aide then asked the general, well, what is behind the black door? And the general said, freedom. That's the passageway that leads to the outside. But only a few have ever been brave enough to choose it. Fear is a big black door that keeps people trapped inside of their comfort zones. In order to be free from what imprisons us, we have to be brave enough to open the door. I want to talk to you tonight a little bit on that subject of the comfort zone. And I think, I might as well tell you, you'll, you'll be a little uncomfortable. In order, you know, you know we're, all, we're all surrounded by comfort zones. They're, they're invisible barriers that make us feel secure and safe. That's why we call them comfort zone. We can be comfortable there. Comfort zones develop after we've done things a particular way for a certain amount of time. We become comfortable doing that. But unfortunately, they can make us so comfortable that we never want to change anything. We just keep doing it that way all the time. Someone said the only people who like change are babies with dirty diapers. <laughs> Maybe that's true. But sometimes it's easier to keep doing the same things over and over again than it is to make the changes that are necessary in our lives comfort zones are not all bad they make us feel secure in our life and that's certainly better than fighting insecurity and some of the issues that go along with that however security is kind of like money money makes a wonderful servant but it makes a very poor master healthy security is found in a relationship with God a loving home, warm friendships, an enjoyable career, a good Bible-believing church. But you understand, there's also some security you find in prison. You think about in prison, you know what? The inmates, they don't have to make any decisions. It's all made for them. They don't have to worry about house payments. They don't have to worry about rent. They don't have to worry about paying insurance. They don't have to worry where their next meal's coming from. That's why, by the way, sometimes when men get out of prison, they commit a crime to go back to prison because at least that's security for them. Do you understand, though, that you can allow your comfort zones to become your prison? Your security? You know, when a crab grows... It breaks out of its hard shell and begins the process of forming a new one. Its lifespan is simply marked by progressing through successive shells. Now the crab grows in between the shells. It will continue to grow as long as it desires to break out of its current shell. When it stops breaking through the shell then the crab ceases to grow and it will eventually die. In other words, the last shell that the crab is in that he no longer desires to break out of becomes its coffin. And I wonder tonight, what, what spiritual comfort zone have you allowed to become your coffin? What spiritual comfort zone have you arrived at that you decide, this is it for me, I'll die in this condition? What would you do in order to leave your comfort zone? Are you willing to leave your comfort zone? Let's take the area of witnessing. Jesus said that we're to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. 
We call that the Great Commission. That is not just for a select few, it's for every single believer to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. You know, I remember being part of a church in the 1970s, and that was an exciting time. And, and I remember so clearly the, the church we were attending, which was a large church, uh, would not, was not uncommon. The church we attended would have 4,000 people on a Sunday church that was baptizing 500 people a year. It was not unusual to, to on a Tuesday night, Brother Bob, in their Tuesday night in their visitation program, it would look like a, the old-fashioned uh, conventions, political conventions. You know, the big poles that went up and you'd have a, a sign on there. Well, they had poles all through the huge auditorium, a couple thousand seat auditorium, and, and that pole would go up and it would say, Junior here, and over here would be primary, and over here would be teenagers, and over here would be adults, and, and everybody gathered in there, and you went to your section, and that was for soul winning night. I mean, it was an exciting time and everybody was enthusiastic and everybody was on fire for God, it seemed like. And man, it was contagious. And boy, buses, buses were running everywhere. At that time, the church we're in ran 40 bus routes. Can you imagine? 40 bus routes all through the Canton area. It was an exciting time. Yet we come to modern day and you find out that most people in churches have never ever led a soul to Christ. Most believers have never ever told someone else how they can go to heaven. We rejected the sacrifice and the compassion and we braced a, a counterfeit gospel, I think, that produces bored, selfish spectators. And so what we've tried to do in our churches is, well, hey, let's entertain everybody. Let's bring in the band. Let's, let's give them what they want. Let's put the lights on. Let's put the screens down. Let's put on a show for everybody. Got to entertain them. Can't get them to do anything else. Churches used to have great bus ministries. Now don't even run buses. And you know why? Because they can't get anybody to work the bus route. Who wants to give up Saturday to work a bus route and to visit homes and try to get people saved? That's outside of their comfort zone. So no, I don't want any part of that. Witnessing, for the most part, is outside of people's comfort zone. But you understand how natural it ought to be? It's so natural that if, if I'm walking with my wife and we walk up to uh, Brother Bob and I haven't seen Brother Bob in 20 years and he hasn't seen me and I say, well, Bob Wallace. He goes, well, Stan Slayball. Hey, how you doing? And we shake hands and give each other a hug and my wife's standing right there. What's the most natural thing for me to do? Yeah, I, if I know what's good for me, I better introduce her. <laughs> yeah, you men are laughing because you've been there, huh? The only time you don't introduce her is when you can't remember who this guy is. You ever been there? You walk away and your wife says, who is that? You say, man, I don't have any idea who that <laughs> I would introduce you, but I don't remember who he was. But, but if he's there and you know him, you know what you do? You introduce him. Let me ask you a question. When you meet somebody and you shake their hand and you introduce yourself for the first time, who else is with you? Jesus Christ. What's well, what ought to be the most natural thing in all the world? Introduce him. Introduce him to Jesus. Hmm? So why well, I'm not comfortable doing that. Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone? Where are missionaries? Today, third world countries lead in missionaries, in sending out missionaries. In fact, the top three countries right now that send out the most missionaries per capita are from the continent of Asia. Second on the horizon is Africa. Are we really honoring the Great Commission in our life? Are we submitting to the authority of Jesus Christ? Are we working to make disciples of Jesus? Are we really striving to make disciples of all nations of the world? 
of all ethnos, all ethnic groups of the world? Are we, are we serious about our job? I was telling our uh, 530 class. Are we serious about our job when we give $220 million, I think was the last figure I saw, $220 million a year to missions in America? But we, we, give, we spend twice as much as that just buying ice cream. I shared with them just the just the NFL.com fantasy football brings in one billion with a B dollars to the NFL. And we can't scrape two hundred million to go to missions to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to everybody in the world. Shame on us. Those early Christians, when Jesus ascended back to earth in Acts 1, He left them that you're going to be witnesses unto me. Where at? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. They got it. And boy, they started in Jerusalem. In fact, the testimony of the folks there were these that have turned the world upside down are here. I mean, you filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. They say that early church in Jerusalem in six months' time grew to almost 100,000 members. An incredible amount of people saved and baptized and brought into the church. And then they scattered out from there and went everywhere preaching the gospel. See, they were, they were fresh on the commission, fresh on the command of Jesus Christ. And it is a command, it's not a suggestion. It is a command, it's not that you're gifted. It is a command that every one of us give the gospel of Jesus Christ. We mentioned again in that class tonight on missions how every one of us is a missionary. You're a missionary where you live. You're a missionary in your neighborhood. You're a missionary where you work. Every day when you park your car and you walk into your office or you walk into your factory, you better understand I'm walking into my mission field right here. And I'm here to reach these people for Jesus Christ. God has you there for a reason. God has you there for a purpose. You're there to give the gospel. You have to get out of your comfort zone to do that. In the passage we read this evening in Matthew 14, a familiar story to us of Peter walking on the water. Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone in the matter of your witnessing? Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone in the matter of walking by faith? You know the story. The storm came and the disciples are trying to hang on to the ship and take care of things and Jesus comes walking to them in the midst of the storm. The fourth watch of the night is sometime between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And you know, once they realize it's Jesus, Peter asked the million dollar question. Can I walk on the water? Can I come to you? And of course the Lord said, Come. And he got out, and guess what? He walked on water. Now, you, most of us will know that it's a scientific impossibility that water does not support the weight of a person. Especially if you're trying to stand on it. But Peter just figured, if Jesus is walking on the water, it must be possible for me to walk on the water. And he was right. And I don't... Uh, uh, yes, he eventually took his eyes off Christ and began to sink. But you understand, don't forget, he walked on the water. Only two men ever did that, Jesus and Peter. That's pretty good company you're in there. It's a pretty good group to be named among. But you know, Peter got to do that, and Peter gets mentioned, and we're still talking about it almost 2,000 years later. Why? Because he got out of the boat. The other guys stayed in their comfort zone and never did climb out of the boat. And he didn't climb out of the boat. When it was calm, he climbed out of the boat in the storm. 
Don't forget that. You know, Lord, I want to walk to you, but could you, could you calm everything down first? Sometimes we say that, God, I want to do this for you, but you, Lord, I want you to do this and fix this and take care of this and take care of that. And once all these things happen, then, Lord, I'll by faith step out. There's no faith in that at all. You're saying, let me see it first, then I'll go, Lord. You see it, that's not faith. Peter stepped out and walked on the water. That was by faith. And he had to put both feet in the water, not half and half. I don't think, I don't, I don't envision Peter sticking, you know, one foot in the boat and the other one, the other one outside of the boat dipping his toe in the water, seeing if it was all right. Uh, Peter's just not that kind of a guy. I see Peter just taking a leap and jumping right in. And he didn't go under. He stayed on top and started walking amazing thing then you have to ask yourself the question what would I do would you have stayed in the boat or would you have tried to get out would you have been like Peter would you have been like the other disciples different fears are what keep us in the boat he had to overcome some fears he had to overcome the fear of criticism what are the other guys going to say if he gets out of the boat? There's Peter again, showing off. There's Peter again, going off without thinking. How foolish he is. How crazy he is. You know what I think Peter thought? Who cares? No matter what they think, it matters what Jesus says. If Jesus says, come, I don't care what they say. I need to answer and I need to obey what Jesus tells me to do. My friend, if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, if you're going to get out of the boat and you follow Him in missions or you follow Him on God's call for your life, you will have people that will tell you you're crazy. No, 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 no. You shouldn't throw your life away like that. I shared with our uh, class tonight during the 5.30 hour on missions that uh, David Livingston, the great missionary to Africa, had a brother in England. I, I, I want to say his name was John. I'm not sure about that. He stayed back in England, became a famous uh, attorney or a doctor there, and well known in England. But you know, when they put his body in Westminster Abbey, that's, that's uh, David Livingston, and his brother John Livingston died. You know what it said on John Livingston's tombstone? It simply said, it didn't say famous attorney or a very successful doctor or lawyer. You know what it said? Brother of David Livingston, the missionary. What really matters? What really matters is what Jesus says. That's all that matters. Your actions always have to be determined by what God tells you to do. Not by what others will say about what God tells you to do. Okay? You have to get over the fear of criticism. You have to get over the fear of failure. What if it doesn't work? Hmm? What if I jump over the side of the boat and I sink like a rock? Huh? Many times people don't try to get out of their comfort zone because they're fearing failure. They fear embarrassment. And so the option is, I won't do anything. I won't venture out at all. But I'd rather fail trying to do something than succeed at nothing. I said I'd rather fail trying to do something than succeed at nothing. Failure, by the way, failure isn't falling down. Failure in the Bible is staying down. The Bible says in Proverbs 24, 16, A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not the end to fall. It's not failure to fall. It's a failure to stay down once you fall. Get back up. The Bible says the reason you get back up is the arm of the Lord, the hand of the Lord is underneath you. And He lifts you back up. And He's able to get you back up and dust you off and say, let's go again. Nobody ever accomplishes anything significant in life without taking some risk to do it. And putting God to the test. <clears throat> For years, Babe Ruth held the home run record, the career home run record. 
with 714 home runs. He still holds, I think he still holds the most career strikeouts. He struck out 1,330 times on his way to that record. You know, he struck out twice as many times as he hit home runs. But when you think of Babe Ruth, you don't think about that big strikeout guy. You think about his home runs. Jonas Salk discovered the polio vaccine. He failed 200 times before he found out the right one. Henry Ford went bankrupt five times before he finally succeeded. Thomas Edison failed over 10,000 times in his attempts to find the right filament for the light bulb. When an age encouraged him to quit after several hundred failures, he said, why quit now? I know of at least a couple hundred things that won't work. That's what we're talking about. I read this and I said something, I think it was to, to Mrs. Wallace this week. Um, she said something about WD-40. I think WD stands for water displacement, if I remember right. 40 was because it was a 40th attempt at it. They had flunked 39 times. Is that right? I, I read that somewhere and I just was thinking about that. And that's why it's called WD-40. Real scientific name, isn't it? Huh? If, if it hadn't worked that time and it worked the next time, you'd all be using WD-41. That's true. Now you wonder why you drink 7-Up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you understand, none of those folks who did those great things, listen, they never could have done it if they weren't willing to get out of their comfort zone. When you think about people in the Bible that did great exploits for God, all of that army of Israel was afraid of Goliath. Nobody would, take, nobody would go out and fight against him. But David, the shepherd boy, was willing to get out of his comfort zone, wasn't he? He says, I'll take on that big guy. When, when Daniel and his three friends went into Babylon with hundreds, if not thousands of others their age, men who were taking young boys, really teenage boys who were taken captive that, that had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace. They took the ones that they felt had leadership abilities. And out of all those hundreds or possibly thousands of young men, four said, we're not going to eat what you give us. We're not going to drink that. That's against our convictions. We're asking you to allow us to eat this and drink this and they were granted permission to do so when, when, when he made the image Nebuchadnezzar and said everybody's going to when you hear the music everybody bows down to this image listen those three Hebrew boys hey what about all the other Hebrew boys what were they doing they must be bowing they had to uh, overcome their fear what would be the fear we're going to burn like toast in the fiery furnace and they said, listen, our God who we serve, Nebuchadnezzar, He's able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. Yeah. But if not, yeah. we're still not bowing down to you. Yeah. You understand? They, they were willing to take the risk, willing to step out by faith, willing to get out of their comfort zone. All those other folks, they bowed down. You know why? That's the comfortable thing to do. Don't make waves. They'd, we're not talking about their names tonight, are we? We're not using them as examples tonight, are we? Fear of failure. Fear of criticism. Fear of the unknown. You have to overcome fear of the unknown to walk by faith. I wonder what will happen if I do this. I wonder what will happen if I get out of the boat. Fear of the unknown keeps a lot of people in the boat. A lot of us, you know, as human beings, we want to know what we're getting into before we get into it. Occasionally, though, God calls us to step into the unknown. You know why? That's faith in God. That's trusting Him. They want to figure, too many of us want to figure it all out before we'll step out and do what God wants. God says, will you do what I want you to do? Well, God, tell me what it is. 
Is that really the right answer? No, it isn't. Will you do what you want me to do? Yes, Lord. What kind of friend are you when your friend says, hey, I really need you to do something for me? Well, that depends. What is it? Or if you're a friend, you say, sure, what do you need? Sure, what do you need? Hmm? There's a big difference. Just like that fellow for the, who would, those men who would take the firing squad right than the door because they didn't know what was behind the door. Their fear of the unknown kept them from freedom. Getting out of the comfort zone, as we said earlier, put Peter in some elite company. Peter, I know, got his eyes on the waves and his mind reverted to the waves and the wind and the storm that he was seeing and he began to sink. And in fact, he didn't just begin to sink, I think he began to drown. And he had to call out for the Lord to save him. And it reminds you that once you step out of the comfort zone, you better keep your eyes on Christ. You better keep your eyes on Jesus. You know, let me just pause here to say this. It's, it's, <clears throat> there's usually not a great cause to be very introspective in your Christian life. I played sports growing up. I hide my athletic body now, but I had one earlier. <laughs> and you know, one thing I know about playing sports, if you're, th if you're thinking about how am I doing, you're not doing very well. If your thought are, wow, I'm really playing good today, huh, about that time you're going to get your bell rung. You just, you just lose yourself. You don't think about uh, how many points you've scored. You don't think about how many tackles you've made. You don't think about uh, any of those situations. You're just focused on playing the game. And when you're focused on serving Christ and doing what you can for Christ and, and accomplishing what you ought to for Him and loving Him and serving Him and, and walking with Him, you don't have much time to turn and look at yourself. Keep your eyes looking on Jesus. Peter began to look down and look at himself and look around. That's when he began to sink. Get out, getting out of the comfort zone when it comes to witnessing. Get out of the comfort zone when it comes to walking by faith. How about getting out of the comfort zone when it comes to giving? Giving. I know immediately there's a nerve. Whenever the preacher says giving, there's a nerve that everybody reaches for their wallet. No! Most of you know Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10 where it talks about the Lord says to, to prove me now and, and uh, bring, it, bring, it, bring the tithe. In fact, look at Malachi. It's the last book of the Old Testament. You're in Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, so it's just one book away. Look at Malachi 3. Notice what the Lord said in verse 10. <coughs> Excuse me. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. God is telling us that when we bring the tithe, by the way, I, I, we have some that send it. God says bring it. That means you come with it. Hello? Don't get me wrong. I'm thankful for anybody that sends anything in. But the truth of the matter is, God says you're supposed to bring it. That means you come along with it. Tithing is not about the money. It's about your faith. It's about your love for the Lord. Our sacrifice, the, the, the giving of the tithe 
uh, puts a smile on the face of God. And it's, it's a struggle for some. It's not easy for some to do that. But it's a matter of faith in God and believing God. We've got to get the mindset of what belongs to us. See, sometimes we, we get the idea that it's our house and it's our cars and it's our money and these are my clothes and these are my things. No, they're not. The Bible says we're stewards. That means we manage somebody else's wealth. We're managing somebody else's possessions. And listen, it's not a problem at all. Listen, if, if Don Taylor came to me and said, Now, uh, Pastor, here's my, here's my deal for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to you every single Friday and give you $500. Well, hey, I think that's a good deal. And I say, what's the catch? He says, the catch is... Whenever I give you $500, you have to give 50 of it back to me. How many of you would make that deal? How hard is that? It's not hard at all. Why is that not hard for me to do? Because you know what? It's his money. He's giving me the $500. I'll give him, if I give 50 to keep 450 every time, I'll take that deal. Well, wait a minute. You say, well, you, you, when that paycheck goes into your account, if you have a direct deposit or you pick up that paycheck from work or wherever they do it, uh, where you are, that's God giving that to you. And God says, now out of that, that $1,000 you just picked up, 100 of that comes back to me. And as long as you do that, I keep giving you 1000 That shouldn't be hard. Because I, I, or, or would you rather God just cut off the thousand, or two thousand, or three thousand, whatever the paycheck is? You see, God is willing to take the challenge. I don't, I don't like that, but God said it, so we have to take it. I don't think tithing is something you ought to try. I think tithing is something you ought to do. But God said, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. God, see, God says, I dare you to do that. I dare you to try that. In fact, uh, I, I thought about the First Baptist Church in Bridgeport. They had a card in their pews, a tithing card. And it was from the church there saying that, I think it was at 90 days, three months. And they had down there, you, you take the tithing challenge and you tithe faithfully for 90 days. And if God does not bless you, is that what it said? If you're not better off financially in 90 days, the church will reimburse your entire tithe that you gave during that time. Now, I'm not making cards up, okay? <laughs> Don't, some of you got your hopes up, didn't you? No. Now, I did not talk to Pastor Roulette. I don't know if anybody's ever taken him up on that offer. I would venture to say no. Not because, it be, and by the way, because it's not their promise. It's God's promise. God doesn't fail on his promises. Well, I just don't see how I can. There's your problem. It isn't sight. It's faith. It's faith. Oh, I'm just not comfortable. Get... What? I guess it's out of your comfort zone, isn't it? You have to get out of your comfort zone. Giving our tithe and offering to the Lord is good for us because money is an accurate measurement of our faith. Money talks. It's our way of showing our gratitude to God for His goodness to us. It keeps us in the spirit of giving and have a heart of wanting to give to the work of God. It keeps us in an attitude of gratitude, giving thanks, which we're supposed to give thanks in everything. It's really a, a, a proper response to the grace of God who spared not His own Son but delivered Him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? If God so loved us that he gave his only begotten son, 
If God gave us of His very best, in fact, He gave His only Son, if He did that for us, how can we be stingy with Him? How can we be ungrateful to Him and not want to give anything? Let me ask you a question. Does God need our money? No, He owns it all. It's not for His benefit. So it must be for our benefit. We get to get in on the blessing. Because God wants us to trust Him. Now you don't give. And you don't tithe to get in with good with God. God promises blessing to you. God promises that He'll, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. But you understand when you, <clears throat> when you fall in love with Jesus Christ, when you receive Him as your Savior, and you, you begin to live for Him, you know what you find yourself wanting to do? You want to give. In fact, you, you, you find yourself that you want to give, and, and it's not a matter of a 10% thing. It really isn't. Looking for ways to go beyond that. Why? Because I want to show how much I love Him. 105,000 people or whatever go into Ohio Stadium to watch a football game. I don't, I don't hear them coming out of there complaining that a coat costs two or three bucks. How expensive the hot dogs are. Realize, you know what, I'm, I, I love the Buckeyes, I'm going to the game, and you know what, they'll, they'll drop the money. They raised the ticket prices, and I don't know what it is for even a... The, the, the cheap ticket now is probably what? 50, 75 bucks? 100 bucks? But you don't see empty seats there on a Saturday, do you? You're coming up on a missions conference. Some of you have decided already, I'm not going to that thing. You know why? It's going to put you out of your comfort zone. But maybe you're like that crab that's just decided I'm going to die in this coffin I'm in. When you stop growing, you die. You never arrive. We had a fellow in our RU group the other night who asked the question, when do you graduate from this thing? When are you done with this? You know what the answer is? Never. It's like asking a, as a Christian, all right, when am I done with this? When do I arrive? Well, when you get to heaven. Graduation is what some people call death. You just go to heaven. You never attain. You never arrive. You always are learning. You're always, God's always bringing things to your life to help you and to change you. But you have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone and give the Lord His tithe? Are you willing to step out of your comfort zone and go above the tithe and say, I'm going to give this much for faith promised missions? Lord, I'm going to give this. I'm going to write the check out every week just like I do the tithe and I'm going to write that faith promise on there and believe that you will bring that money to me. That's faith. That doesn't mean that you don't have to do anything. You can do something. You could probably go with one less trip to McDonald's or Tim Hortons or your favorite place to stop off and get a refreshment. A few dollars a week adds up. Hmm? And, and all of us have those things. That we dollar and a two dollar here and a three dollar here. And add it up over a month, it could come up to thirty, forty, fifty dollars, sixty dollars. Just on two dollars a day. Hmm? But that's not very comfortable, is it? Are we really going to reach the world and stay in our comfort zone? 
Are we really going to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish in life and stay in our comfort zone? I'll end with the parable of the candles. It goes like this. There was a blackout one night when the lights went out. I fumbled to the closet to where we keep the candles for nights like this. I lit four of them. I was turning to leave when the large candle in my hand, with the large candle in my hand, when I heard a voice. Now hold it right there. Who said that? I did. The voice was near my hand. Who are you? What are you? I am a candle. I lift up the candle to take a closer look. There was a tiny face in the wax. Don't take me out of here, it said. I said, what? It said, don't take me out of this room. What do you mean, I said. I have to take you out. You're a candle. Your job is to give light, and it's dark out there. But you can't take me out. I'm not ready, said the candle. I need more preparation. I couldn't believe my ears. More preparation? Yes. He said, I've decided to research this job of light giving so I won't go out and make a bunch of mistakes. You'd be, dis you'd be surprised how distorted the glow of an untrained candle can be. All right, then I said, you're not the only candle on the shelf. I'll blow you out and take the others. But it was then I heard the other voices. We're not going either. I turned to the other candles. And he said, your candles and your job is to light dark places. Well, that may be what you think, said the first one. You may think we have to go, but I'm busy. I'm meditating on the importance of light. It's really enlightening. <laughs> and you other two, I ask. Are you going to stay too? The short, fat, purple candle with plump cheeks spoke up. I'm waiting to get my life together. I'm not stable enough. The last, the last candle had a female voice and a very pleasant voice to the ear. I'd like to help, she explained, but lighting just isn't my gift. I'm a singer. I sing to the other candles to encourage them to burn more brightly. And she began a rendition of this little light of mine. The other three joined in, and they filled the closet with singing. And I took a step back and considered the absurdity of it all. Four perfectly good candles singing to each other about light, but refusing to come out of the closet. The question for you tonight is, when's the last time you shared the gospel with somebody? The world's full of darkness. It's a dark place. We're supposed to go out and shine as lights in the world. And we're singing about the delight and meditating about the light and talking to each other about the light instead of going out and being the light. We were made to shine. Let your light shine, so shine before men, people. They'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Get out of your comfort zone. You know what big days and missions conferences and revival meetings do? Give us an opportunity to break out of our comfort zones. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to break out of your comfort zone and witness for Christ like you should? Are you willing to break out of your comfort zone and walk by faith and not by sight? Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone and give as God directs you to give? And do it by faith and not by sight. Don't, don't use a pencil when you're deciding what you'll do for faith promise missions. Get on your knees alone with God and ask Him what He wants you to do. And then respond to Him. Let's, let's, let's not stay in our comfort zone, church. I don't want to see what we can do. I want to, I by faith, see what God can do. That's what the exciting thing is. Let's, let's be like Peter. Let's not stay in the boat. 
Let's get out of the boat. Let's, let's attempt great things for God because He's a big God and He deserves our best. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God tonight and thank you, Lord, for the story we read about Peter getting out of the boat. Getting out where it wasn't comfortable. Getting out doing something he'd never done and no one else had has done but Peter. And Lord, tonight I think the challenge for us is to each of us individually have to look at our life and, and identify what comfort zones that we've kind of just been comfortable with. We do this, we do this, we do this. And next week we do this and we do this and we do this and we just keep on doing the same things because that's comfortable for us. And Lord, I believe tonight you've gone about this auditorium and you've stopped at people's seats. And you've touched in their heart and in their life areas that you want them to step out of their comfort zone. And they're going to begin to do some things and to believe some things that they never thought they'd see themselves doing. But you've prompted their heart to do it and I pray they're willing to get out of the boat and get out of their comfort zone and see God come through and see you do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. No one looking right now. I wonder how many folks in the room tonight would say, Pastor, I, I know that I'm saved. I know that there's a time in my life when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I know I have eternal life and I know I'll go to heaven one day. Pastor, here's my hand as a testimony. Would you slip it up for a moment? I know I'm saved. Could I see your hand? Thank you. You may put it down. Who's here this evening would say, Pastor, I don't know. Man, you mean somebody can know for sure if they die, they'll go to heaven? You can know that. And that's, that's from the Bible, from God's Word. And if no one's ever taken the Bible and showed you how you can know you have eternal life, we'd like to honor it and the privilege to do that for you tonight. If you're here this evening and say, Pastor, man, I don't know. If I died tonight, if something happened to me, I don't know if I'd go to heaven or not, but I'd like to know. Could I pray for you? Would you slip your hand up and just say, Pastor, that's me. Pray for me tonight. I don't know if I'm saved. All right. Anybody? I'll wait just a moment. Just put it up and put it back down. All right. I wonder how many believers here tonight then would say, Preacher, the Holy Spirit stopped in my seat tonight and spoke to me about getting out of my comfort zone. Whatever area it's in, whatever, whatever uh, situation it is, everybody's going to be different in your comfort zone. But God stopped there. The Holy Spirit spoke to your heart. And you say, I'm definitely going to launch out by faith. I'm going to get out of the boat, preacher. I'm going to get out of the comfort zone and I'm going to see what God wants me to do. Preacher, pray for me this evening. God's dealing with my heart. Would you slip your hand up? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. You may put them down. In a moment I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. If you're here tonight and you've never in your life that you know of have asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, then when after I pray, we'll stand to our feet. The pianist will play. Brother Bob's going to sing. Folks will be coming to pray and use the altar. You just slip from your seat, come down here to the front. Someone will take a Bible who's been trained, and they'll show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. Best day of your life when you know that you have eternal life. God has spoken to your heart, Christian. You come and pray. If you're saved and never been baptized, you ought to come. We'll baptize you. If you're saved and baptized and want to belong to Bible Baptist Church, we invite you to come. Whatever it is that God's dealt with your heart about, respond to Him this evening. Father, thank You for speaking to hearts tonight. Thank You, Spirit of God, for doing Your work as only You can. Have Your way now in these next few moments, Lord. Do what only Thou canst do, please. Help each one to respond to what You're telling them to do in their heart. And we'll thank You for it. Quietly with your heads bowed, stand to your feet.